Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stephanie and this is Steph's Stuff. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Um, my main goal of the day is that we need to can some peaches. I bought a bunch last week and they ripened fast. So I gotta get these canned and I've never canned peaches but I love them so I'm super excited to have these on the shelf. But I do have a whole host of stuff behind me that I wanted to show you guys first before we get started. The first thing that I have are these pineapple spears that I got from Sam's. They had coconut water in them, but the thing the internet says to do is to fill it with Malibu. <laughs> um, so we're gonna make some boozy pineapple spears. These will have to sit for like a week or so before they're gonna be good. But the coconut water that came off of them, I saved it because it tasted delicious. Um, I knew I didn't have enough um, to do this with just this bottle. So unfortunately I had to pick up a whole new bottle of Malibu. <laughs> well, I might surprise myself and be able to do the whole jar. Well, look at that. That's almost perfect. So we're just gonna leave that as it is. And now I have a new bottle ready to go. If you buy this at Sam's, it's like $25 for 1.75 liters so i think it's a pretty good deal on this but that'll go in the recycling and we are going to close this up put this in the jar or in the fridge and in a couple weeks we'll have boozy pineapple spears if this is good i don't see why i can't do this with just regular pineapple but i don't know the internet seemed to think that the uh ones in the coconut water did really well i don't know if it's because of the coconut flavoring so this is going to go away and I also bought this well, this is just Sam's Maker's Mark brand of spice drum I want to make homemade vanilla and I've seen you know people do it with bourbon and vodka but vodka is traditional um, but I've also seen people do it with spice drum and I think that that would make an amazing vanilla so I've got a few vanilla beans but I need more and I have these lemonade jars that I bought at Aldi that had lemonade in them and I washed them and everything, but I'm going to uh, get the vanilla mm -hmm. going in there and that'll just sit for a few weeks. I'm not gonna do that today because I don't have the vanilla beans, but that's also why I have a gigantic bottle that is literally bigger than my head of Spice Drum. The other thing that I got at Sam's, this is just not a big deal, but I thought I would show you guys. If you'd like to make salmon patties, but you don't like to open like the traditional cans that still have the bones and stuff inside. Sometimes that can give you the ick and that's totally fine. Um, but if you get this at Sam's, this is five of the seven ounce cans. You can see it here. Um, this is great salmon in here. It does not have any skin. It doesn't have any bones. You're not gonna have to pick through anything. It's really good looking to make delicious salmon patties. It is my favorite. You get um, five cans for yeah, seven ounce cans. You get five cans for like under $16. So if that's something that you're interested in, I get this at Sam's. It's delicious and you don't have to go through. I know they say that those bones cook down, but it still kind of grosses me out a little bit. I don't mind using it for the dogs. I don't know if that's terrible of me or not, but I don't mind using that. Um, I think it's like double O brand or something. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry, guys. My asthma is just really on a tear the last couple weeks. I've been to the doctor, I'm on some medicine to try to get this over with. Um, this last thing I wanted to show you guys, it's just an electric knife. I made some more of the no need bread the other day and we had breakfast sandwiches this morning. Let me show you the bread. Sorry. Um, it was just, um, in a round loaf that I made and we made breakfast sandwiches out of it now on these big long pieces like this we just cut this in half this way and I had a sandwich out of that but I wanted you to see how pretty this slices the bread and even on the bottom like you want this to have a nice tough bottom on it not tough like not chewy but yeah it's a crusty bread so it's gonna have a little bit of a of a of a sturdy bottom on it and uh, that electric knife just goes through those so easily we tried a lot of different 
gadgets when I started making bread and the electric knife has been the best. I got this one on Amazon. It's a Hamilton Beach and it's got a little carrying case that it comes in. So if you're looking at something for cutting your homemade bread, if you've made that crusty bread and it's kind of difficult to cut with the traditional knife, grab you one of these. They're the best things. Now, otherwise we're going to get to peaches. We are going to get our peaches canned. Um, oh, I just remembered I'm short one jar. I have to get one more jar and put it in here. I have jars um, sanitizing in one pot. I have water heating up to a boil in another and we're going to get cracking on peaches. So all we're going to do to get started on these is just like you would do a tomato. We're just going to make a little shallow X on the bottom. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that there. Just made a little X. That's going to make these easier to peel. I have water in here coming up to a boil. It's close. I just turned it up a little bit more. So I'm hoping that by the time I get done scoring these peaches, that's going to be ready to go. These peaches are from Georgia. I got these from a company called the Peach Truck. And they do, um, they travel like the southeast and do deliveries. These, um, they've gone up quite a bit in price. When I started buying these, you got uh, 25 pounds for $39. This year, it was 10 pounds for $38. So for $1 less, you got less than half of the volume that we were paying before. So it's, um, it's not... It's not a great deal, but it is a, a family owned business, so it's something you can feel good about. But honestly, if you've got a local orchard, excuse me, orchard or farmer's market or anything like that where you can find a good deal on peaches, just grab them. Even if you go to the grocery store, two of these in here are actually from Sam's because when I got these from the peach truck, they were not ripe. This one is from Sam's. You can see it's a little bit of a different variety, it's quite a bit more red. And it's also quite a bit softer because I wanted peaches that day and the peach trucks were not ready to eat. They had to ripen. But boy, as soon as they started ripening, they were ready to go. So I weighed these out and I have about six pounds. This is that other one from Sam's. These were so good to eat, but we're just not going through them quick enough. And like I said, I've never canned peaches, so I'm really excited to have these. After we get this water boiling, we are going to cook these for three minutes. Then we'll pull them out and get them cooling in some ice water until they're cool enough to handle. And then we'll slip the skins off and slice them up. So all we're doing right now is just letting this water get up to a boil and then we'll throw them in. While this is still coming up to boil, I thought I would show you we harvested the garlic and I had that set out for... Um, a couple of weeks, I put it in our garage that we were going to tear down, but I don't know, maybe that's going to stay. I don't really know. They don't pay me to make those decisions around here. Um, I should have put a fan on it because the cloves, like the whole clove, inside some of them were kind of mushy. So I did lose some garlic that way, but the pieces that I got look fantastic. Oh, I don't know if that's going to focus. There it goes. Um, they're good size. This is one whole garlic, like just a garlic clove, not a bulb. Sorry. Um, this is just one whole garlic clove and it's huge. It's so big. So we got quite a few. Um, dad wants to save a couple. We have some old horse watering troughs that leaked and we're going to turn those into some raised beds. And so he was talking about trying a couple of those in there um, just to practice with um, and I'll probably end up buying new garlic starts to redo but um, I was really tickled with this I'm going to I need to research how we're gonna save it if I'm gonna dehydrate it and grind it up or if I'm just gonna freeze it or what I'm gonna do with it I don't know yet but we got a decent garlic harvest there's maybe a cup and a half in here of bowl or cloves so I'm pretty tickled with that. Okay, I think this is a 20 quart pot that I've got these peaches in. You can see they're, they're bubbling away pretty good. And I have a timer set for three minutes. So after the three minutes, we're gonna get these out and put them in an ice bath until they are comfortable, that a 
cool enough that I can touch without burning myself. I'm going to be honest. I didn't think that getting these peaches into this bowl of ice water was going to be the most challenging part of this, but I needed a big bowl because I had 18 peaches here and um, it's, it's getting, it's getting too full of water before I am, I had like three peaches in it and I had to go ahead and siphon off some of that water and then add some more ice. So, um, like I said, I didn't expect this to be the most challenging part, but I think I might go ahead and just get another bowl of ice water here. Let me see if I can't fit a couple more. What do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. If I could fit three more peaches in here, I could have nine and then nine in the next bowl. <laughs> yeah, this is going to work. And these skins are loosening up around the bottom. I was able to test one of them. Whew, I don't know how I'm going to move this thing. Give me just a second. Let me get another bowl with some ice water in it. And we'll finish getting these out of the pod. Okay. We have another, another bowl of ice water. And I didn't put nearly as much water in this one as I did the first one. Um, I can always add more if I need to. But I thought if this is just going to melt the ice cubes. I don't know. I don't know what I thought. In my head, it all made sense. Saying it out loud, it just sounds kind of weird. So, it doesn't matter. We're going to get these peaches cool. And get these sliced up. This really isn't a super labor-intensive process. I'm just trying to make sure to pay attention to my steps. I have a tendency to kind of rush, rush things. So, I'm just trying to go slow. Just get one step at a time done. And hopefully, we'll have some really lovely peaches to show for it. You can see this bowl, like almost all the ice is melted. Okay, here's the last one. I had put a dish towel down. It's kind of a grody, scrunchy dish towel. But I had put it down because I thought that um, when I start slicing these peaches and peeling them, it might get kind of messy. But it might also just be that I have a lot of water everywhere. Okay, these feel like they're okay to handle. Let me shift things around and we'll start slicing and peeling peaches. I grabbed a scrap bowl to uh, throw the peels and the pits in. And let's see how easily, oh yeah, these are gonna peel real nice. Um, I'm gonna get this one peeled and show you how we're gonna cut it up. It's just slices, I'm pretty sure you guys can handle that, but I'll show you regardless. Um, and Um, sorry, I was really intent on this peach. Um, I'll show you guys how we're going to get this sliced up and then I'll, I'll do the rest of them. I saw Becoming a Farm Girl do this. Her videos are beautifully shot and I will link her video down below. I want to be careful while I'm splitting these away from the pit. These are freestone peaches. Um, ah, I just said I wanted to be careful and I split this one, but I think it's going to be okay. Uh, these are freestone peaches, so this pitch should come out pretty easily. And all we're going to do is just slice these, slice these into three or fours. I'm probably going to do threes on these because, like three per half, because these aren't giant peaches. And I think, oh, they smell so good, you guys. Oh, my stars. Um, after we get... Um, after I get these sliced up, we are going to get them jarred up. So I've got to make sure these jars are getting sterilized. Um, oh, what I was saying with becoming a farm girl, uh, she actually um, cleaned her peaches before she even got them on to blanch. Uh, she cleaned it with a, a fruit and vegetable cleaner. And she saved her skins and she made some lovely looking gourmet salt or sugar um, that you can use for like a sugar scrub or for on oatmeal or anything like that. She saved her skin, she dehydrated them, and made a peach sugar out of them. And they looked, it looked fantastic. I'm not gonna do that because I don't know that um, my family will go through that as quickly, but that is an option that you can do. We're gonna just give these probably to the chickens for a treat or throw them on the compost bin, I'm not sure. 
but I'm going to finish getting these sliced up and we'll be back when we're ready to put them in jars. You can see on this peach it had a little bit of a brown spot so any of these that I'm running across that have a little spot like that I'm just cutting it out of there and throwing it in the shred or in the in the shred bin I'm throwing that in the uh, compost bowl but otherwise I feel like this is easy going but it is it is taking longer I've gotten I feel like it's easier to do it with my fingers but um I have gotten slowed down by this part of things Bindi's sitting over here with me. She doesn't know what I'm doing and if I have anything that she might enjoy eating over here. These are, um, to quote Pretty Woman, slippery little suckers. So that's, yeah, it's going. Just not quite as quickly as I would like for it to. But that's okay. We're going to get through all of these. Something that I'm noticing, I'm on this second batch of the second bowl. So, you know, these had to sit in that boiling water a little bit longer while I got a second bowl out with ice water and stuff. But I'm noticing these that cooked a little bit longer, uh, that they are doing so much better as far as when it's time to slice them. Now, I'm sure that the universe is going to make a liar out of me this time. But what I've been doing is um, just cutting around. And then I've been cutting three slices on each side. And these have just been coming apart and they've been staying whole. I haven't had to fight with them. Uh, this first batch, one of the peaches, I just massacred getting it out of there. But yeah, these that cooked a little bit longer are just coming apart so easily. And they're popping right off of that pit. I'm not having to... Um, wiggle them and work them off of there. They're coming off by themselves super easy. So it said three minutes, but honestly, I think if you maybe go about five minutes, you might have a little bit better luck. That's just something if you're willing to try. I will say if you or someone that you're doing this project with, if you have sensory issues where um, sticky things on your hands are kind of off-putting, this might not be the best project to try together um, or for you to try. And that's okay. Um, ugh. I don't even usually have that aversion and my hands are, well, that's a lie. I don't like my hands gross, but, um, it, uh, it's a real sticky, real sticky process. So, um, and real, not sticky so much as just, um, you know, it's wet peaches. You're touching them. It is what it is. But these are going pretty well. The second batch is going a lot easier than that first batch that I did. Let's see. This one was one of those older peaches. And this one's not doing quite as well, but this was a quite a bit softer peach too from the other ones that we used. Ah, I kind of got my slices out of whack on this, but it's going to be fine. So anyway, I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to go back to slice some peaches and I'll be back in just a minute. All right. I got our jars out of the canner. Those are still good and hot. I have some simple syrup going over here on the other burner. Mom just got home. She went to go grab some critter feed. And so all the babies are excited. If you hear little tippy taps, that's what's happening. And I want to show you guys this tomato that dad just brought in from outside. It's massive. I think they're weighing it right now. Mm -hmm. um, I have a silicone pad underneath my um, jars here in case we get sticky. <laughs> she just weighed it. She said it was one and a half pounds on the dot, this tomato that Dad just brought in. It is a German pink. It's a German pink tomato. What we're doing with these peaches, we're filling these jars to a half inch head space and we were going to fill it in with the simple syrup that I have. All I'm doing now is just getting these jars topped off. Uh, the recipe says I should be able to do six jars. Um, I have five wide mouths here because those are handy and I prefer the wide mouths. But um, if I can fill up six, then I'll just get a lid ready for this regular mouth jar. I think mom's taking everybody outside now. No, it's right behind. 
Oh, I thought you were taking them outside. Oh, <laughs> these, you know, I did a taste on these peaches to make sure. I mean, my hands were absolutely covered in them. And, um, the one peach that I just kind of decimated when I was trying to, um, when I was trying to take it apart, I took a bite of that one to see how they tasted. There's nothing better than a fresh peach. I mean, just nothing at all. I don't think I'm going to get six jars out of this. I think I'm going to get, ugh, I don't know that I'm going to get four quart jars out of this. Let me see what I can do on this last jar. Well, this slice can come out. Let's see if we can fill this jar up. I hope so. I think we'll be able to. And this way, none of these peaches are going to go to waste. The, the When we got these before, and we would have extra, um, we would usually just cut them off and freeze them. And this jar is going to be a little bit shy, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is and see if this works. I will fill it up with the simple syrup, um, and I'll go ahead and still fill it to a half inch headspace with this simple syrup and see if that doesn't allow us to go ahead and can it. I changed my mind. Um, I got this jar ready to go, this pint jar. Uh, I divvied up the couple extra. I mean, these, it all fit fine. Our simple syrup, syrup should be about ready to go, and then we'll start getting these in the canner. While this is getting ready, I'm just going to show you, Dad went to go grab this tomato, and it's like three tomatoes. That's the bottom of it. This is a German pink um, variety. It smells really good. They don't get bright red like a lot of them. This is the heirloom variety, and they taste amazing. We'll just cut out these little bad spots. I will absolutely devour this thing. I love tomatoes. I love when it's time to eat tomatoes, but you can see there in the middle, there's more mm -hmm. blooms on this side, and then this is the stem end where he picked it. Um, these heirloom varieties have a tendency to put a lot of blooms together, and you get a pound and a half tomato like this. <laughs> Okay, so we are ready to get our simple syrup going in our jars. I'm just going to use a measuring scoop. This is a half cup. To fill this up, we are going to a quarter inch headspace. And this little um, jar funnel has measurements on there. I don't think you guys can see it. It's definitely fogging up with the water. But that's going to be really helpful because I usually don't go that full. I will go ahead and debubble these, and then if I need to adjust that headspace, I will. I'm going to go ahead and finish getting these done, and we'll get them in the canner. Do you guys like my gloves sitting there? That's one of those oven mitts. It's what I had that hot pan sitting on. So we are definitely going to wipe these rims. Everything we've touched today has been sticky, and we want to make sure we haven't done all this work for our jars not to seal. Now, lately, I have had a few failures, and I'm not sure... I haven't been able to figure out what the problem is. Um, I've been using all the same lids as usual and doing everything like we normally do. That's been pressure caned and I'm hoping with this water bath I'm going to have a little bit better luck. And we are, uh, I got about that one backwards, sorry. Just backwards for me because I'm a weirdo. Um, we're using ball lids. This is the last of the ball lids that I have once I'm done with this stack. Um, I'll be on the four jars lids for the wide mouths. I think I'm, I know I've been already out of them for the regular mouth. I'm also going to do this in my pressure canner. Uh, we are water bathing. We're just using that pressure canner. Oh, gracious. We're just using the pressure canner as a water bath canner because it's easier and I already had it out. It was easy to get to. Got a little bit of peach stuff on that one. All right. These are ready to go. They're going to go into the canner. And yeah, let's get these in there.
Well, this turned out to be an adventure. Um, I actually processed these twice because the first time that I got them out, none of the jars had sealed. And actually one of them, when I lifted it out with the jar lifter, the flat, the ring, everything just came right off. When I got all of these out, I didn't know if any of them were going to seal because they were all um, spewing the liquid. Um, every These three have sealed. This one has not. If it doesn't, I don't care. We'll just eat it. It's not a problem. But um, one thing to be careful of, I burnt the heck out of this finger. This one got a little bit. I've got some ointment on there right now. Um, when you're working with um, a hot pot with a lot of steam, maybe wear something like this when you're taking the lids off. Um, be careful because it hurts. And um, I had an appointment to get my nails done today and I had to cancel it and I'm real upset about that. But um, this hurts real bad. So I think that's about all that we're gonna do today. Let me get you guys spun around um, and you can look at this mess behind me and we'll finish this up. <laughs> so like I said, that was a bit of an adventure. My hand hurts pretty good. I took some Tylenol and I've just had it sick and soaking in some cool water most of the time. Um, but anyway, be smart. Don't be like me and try to take this lid off where steam is going to escape and get you. Go ahead and be safe about it. Um, it's not too bad. I think it'll ease up here shortly, I hope. Um, but anyway, these peaches, I, we got at least three quart jars and I'm happy with that. If this one doesn't seal, I kind of wish it would, but I can either freeze it. I can make a cobbler with it. We can just eat them. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> so as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Please make sure to give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. Comment, share, whatever you want to do to interact. It really helps me out and I'll see you in the next video.